This is the study of geography and these are the branches of geography. Physical geography, human geography and practical geography. These are among the few topics that we look at when we study geography. We look at industrialization, we look at forestry, we look at tea plantations, maize plantations, brick making industry among many many others. Hello my learners and this is uh, your usual geography teacher Sarah and we are looking into geography form 2 lesson 9. We are talking about the second internal land forming process that is folding. Uh, after folding we come now to talk about folding. And what we first do is we define the term folding. Folding means the breaking or the cracking or the fracturing of the old crustal rocks. We have the basement rocks, very old and hard rocks, which even if they are suspect, subjected to tension of forces or compression of forces, they will not fold. Instead, they break. So that is what we call faulting. Now you should be very careful that in your exam you can be asked to differentiate between folding and faulting. One of them is the bending of the crustal rocks and the other one is the fracturing of the crustal rocks. If you are able you can talk about the bending of the young crustal rocks and the fracturing of the old crustal rocks. Very good. Uh, this cracking of the crustal rocks sometimes or in most cases may cause the rocks to shift their position. That what we call displacement of rocks. So the, when the crust is being cracked, sometimes the, the rocks can be moved up or displaced upwards or they can be displaced, displaced downwards. So we have uh, vertical displacement of rocks. That is, um, if the cracking is severe, it may cause displacement of rocks as we shall come to see. Then we talk about the causes of faulting, the causes of faulting. And uh, uh, faulting is caused by the forces which are acting in the earth's interior. Uh, if you can remember, in the forces uh, that we talked about in our initial lessons. We talked about the tension of forces, we talked about compression of forces, and we talked about shear forces. And all those ones are responsible for the cracking of the crustal rocks. If only the rocks are very hard. Let us see how the forces look like. Now, uh, the crustal rocks may be subjected to tensional forces. So when tensional forces are subjected to a block of the crust of rocks, they cause the, the cracks to, I mean the rocks to crack. And the kind of crack that they form is what we call a normal fault. Uh, a normal fault is uh, like that. This is a normal fault and it is caused by tensional forces. We were just looking at the causes of cracks in the crust. And we are able to see that uh, cr uh, cracks in a rock can be caused by the presence of tensional forces. And the tensional forces, they lead to the formation of normal faults. The second cause of the cracks is the compression of forces, uh, which lead to the formation of the reversed faults. The reversed faults are the exact opposite of uh, the normal faults. Now, the third cause of cracking of the crustal rocks is the shear forces. The shear forces are just like compression of forces. They act from opposite directions on a piece of crustal rocks, but they run parallel to each other. They don't meet. So they cause a crack in between them. That is what we have. We have these forces, some moving to the opposite direction, and uh, this other one should be moving downwards. Maybe the arrow is shown in a wrong direction. So we have this land being pushed there and this other one has been pushed here. So they are moving past each other, shear forces. 
Then our next uh, subtopic is about types of folds. Just like the types of folds, we also have the types of cracks or the types of folds. The fracturing does not happen in the same way. They, it happens differently depending on the type of folds and also the nature of the rocks. And also it may also depend on, um, on the the nature of the forces, which type of force was applied there. So we have uh, different types of faults. We have, five, I mean, faults, yes, we have five. And the first one we talk about is the normal fault. We have just said that a normal fault is caused by the tensional forces. The initial uh, part of the rocks before they were faulted, they were subjected to tensional forces, and when the, la the rocks were subjected to tensional forces, they led to the formation of what? Of uh, the normal faults. The normal faults have got their strokes like that. That the direction of the up throw, we are going to have the up throw and the down throw, they are going to be in the same direction. So we have the formation of um, one type of the faults is the normal fault which has been caused by tension of forces and that is the only type of fault that is caused by the tension of forces. We look at the second type of uh, fault that is um, uh, we have the reverse or reversed faults they are caused by compression of forces and these forces, this is the, the layers of the rocks before the faulting, they were subjected to compression of forces, forces from either land. And uh, we are going to look at uh, the type of faults that have been formed. You can see how they are formed. These are the reversed faults, and that is their nature. The other ones were open up out like that. These ones are closing like that. And that is the second type. And then we have the third type, which we call the tear or the shear faults. We call them tear, kurarua, or shear faults. And we can also call them the slip faults. And they have been caused by the shear forces. Um, we have the shear forces, which are acting on a, the layers of the crust or rocks on opposite directions, but in parallel to each other. You see, they are moving from opposite directions towards each other, but they pass past each other, they slide past each other like this. So this one is moving that way and this way, but they are working on the same piece of land. And what will happen is that this piece of land will be pushed up like that, while this one will be pushed in this direction. And this kind of fault is horizontal. It will not lead to the formation of um, displacement of rocks either upwards or downwards and this is what we call a shear fault. Then we have the fourth one that we call the overthrust fault. Overthrust fault. It is also caused by um, compression of forces that are very severe from one part and they cause uh, some form of great intense, great tension at the center and leading to the anticline to crack. They lead to where we have the axis. The, there is the cracking that will take place there. The reason being the forces were being severe from one side more than from the other. And that is what we call a thrust fault. And then finally we have an anticlino uh, fault and uh, where the anticline has been uh, uh, formed, the forces, the compression of forces might be very severe to cause several cracks at the crest of the, of the anticline. Let us look at one. So the, the overthrust has got one crack like that while we are going to have this one, we may have several arcing of the crust. The, the top part, the arcing of the crest actually, the top part has got several cracks. There are several faults and this is because of the Saphir compressional forces. Then we look at uh, the various types of landforms 
that are formed due to folding. Various types of landforms that are forced, caused due to faulting. Number one is the formation of an escarpment. Number one is the formation of an escarpment, which we called a fault escarp. Then we have a block mountain, which we called a host mountain or a, a fault block. Then we have a tilt block. Then we have a rift valley. Those are the landforms that are formed due to faulting. You remember the ones that were formed by folding? We had fold mountains, we had intermountain plateau, and we had intermountain basin. We have an escarpment, we have a fault, we have an escarpment, we have a fault block or a block mountain, we have a rift valley, and we have um, a tilt block. So we have a rift, we have a rift valley, a fault block, a tilt block and an escarpment. Let us look at each one of them. A fault escarp, which is also called an escarpment. Uh, we have the Mao escarpment, that is the one that we are so familiar with. And this one is, uh, what is an escarpment? An escarpment is just a steep slope. It can be found at the coast, where there is a cliff. It can also be found in just inland. If it's found inland, like the one we have in Maimayu, that's just a a what? A, a steep slope, but where is it facing? It is facing a down throw. It is facing the flow of the Rift Valley, which was formed because that land sank down, so it is facing a down throw. Now, uh, the, the steep cliff-like slope, the steep slope is uh, can be formed by faulting. That is a... Uh, uh, it is formed along a line of fault where rocks are placed. We talked about faulting may lead. Continued fault, I mean, uh, uh, tension of forces or uh, compression of forces may cause displacement of rocks, may cause the rocks to be displaced upwards or downwards. Displacement means movement. And now here, uh, when the normal faults are... Uh, being formed due to tension of forces, we may have some land that is being thrown upwards. Let us look at that. Uh, that is uh, the formation of an escarpment. Uh, that is a steep slope. That is the tension of forces, they act on the crust or rocks, the layers of the crust or rocks, and they cause the formation of a normal fault line. Continued pulling away like that may cause this part to be thrown downward, to these rocks to be displaced downwards as these ones are being displaced upwards. And this part here that is steeply sloping is what we call an escarpment. So an escarpment can be formed by tensional forces. It can also be formed by uh, compression of forces. We have this uh, layers of the crust or rocks being subjected to compression of forces. The forces, they work on it and they form, they lead to the formation of a normal, uh, sorry, a reversed fault. They lead to the formation of a reversed fault. And this reversed fault, uh, if the forces continue, then one part of the land might be pushed up when this other one, maybe it may remain there. So there is upward displacement of rocks leading to the formation of a steep slope that we call an escarpment. So an escarpment, when you see an escarpment, it cannot tell you that that rift valley was formed. I mean, that escarpment or rift valley was formed due to tensional or due to compression of forces. It could have been either. So you have to do further research to know which type exactly were responsible for the formation 
of that escarpment that you are able to see. And it might be complicated because after some time, uh, they, be, they look the same. You see there is some part of the land that is hanging where there is a reversed fault. But very quickly the forces of denudation, they work on this hanging part and it behaves the same way like the normal fault. So it might be very difficult sometimes to tell which forces were responsible for the formation of that particular escarpment. Then let us look at the second landform or the second feature that is formed due to uh, faulting and that is the formation of a block mountain what we call a host mountain host h-o-r-s-t or what we call a fault block because it has been formed due to faulting fault block host mountain or uh, block mountain because it's a block of rocks or crust or rocks yes now um, what is a block mountain it is an up land that is bordered by almost parallel faults it's an upland that is formed by that is bordered an upland that is bordered by parallel faults and it could either be formed by uh, tensional forces or uh, it can either be formed by tensional forces or compressional forces let us look at one at a time the formation of a block mountain through or by tensional forces. The formation of block mountains through tensional forces. We have the land here, the, the crust or rocks were subjected to tensional forces. Land before the cracking, the land that was calm was subjected to tensional forces what will happen it will lead to the formation of a type of fault do you remember the type of fault that is caused by tensional forces yes we called it what tensional I mean we sorry we called it what we called it a normal fault let us see how it looks like now uh, the tensional forces have led to two parallel faults which are normal in nature one fault line here and another fault line here and the tensional forces are there acting on the crust or rocks. Further, further tensional forces will lead to the land on either side of the fault line to sink as the land in the middle, as the block in the middle remains in its position. That is what we are saying, that the land on either side of the, the fault lines, if we go back, if we go back, we shall be able to see uh, this is the middle block. These are the land on either side. And uh, with, uh, uh, continued, with continued tension of forces, the land on either side will sink as the middle block will remain in, in its position. And so we are going to have what we call a block mountain. Of course, forces of denudation will work on these hanging pieces of land and it will lead to the formation of a block mountain. Now, when you are describing uh, the formation of a block mountain through tension of forces, remember to talk about the normal fault. Remember to talk about continued tension of forces will cause the land on either side of the floor uh, of the faults to sink as the middle block remains in its position. Those are the key areas that we look at. And so you started with uh, the initial diagram was uh, if you are asked to draw with diagrams, you talk about the land without uh, the cracks, but the land was subjected to tensional forces. You can see them. Then you come down the the tension of forces led to the formation of the normal faults and then now we move on and we have the normal faults uh, when the, 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 the tension of forces continued the land on either side subsided they went down as the middle block remained in its position to lead to the formation of a block mountain let us look at uh, the formation of a block mountain through compression of forces now 
the land was subjected, the same crustal rocks, layers of the crustal rocks were subjected to compression of forces and continued compression of forces led to the formation of which type of uh, faults. We have the reversed faults. The tensional forces is the normal fault. This one you have to indicate and name them. You name them, we have the reversed faults. Continued pushing from either side. We have the middle block and the land on either side. What will happen? Let us see. When we have continued pushing, the middle block will be pushed up as the land on either side will remain in normal position, initial position. So it will lead to the formation of a block mountain. So it is a little different, but the same uh, end result. Normal fall, I mean tensional forces act on the crustal rocks to form a normal fault. The land on either side sinks, the middle block remains in position. Uh, compression of forces act on a, a crustal rocks to form reversed faults. Continued pushing or compression of forces lead to the uh, rising of uplifting of the middle block while the land on either side remain in its initial position. Either way, the middle part is going to be raised and we call it a, a host mountain, a fault block or a block mountain. And then number three, we have a tilt block. Very good. Now, a tilt block, what is a tilt block? A tilt block is a, a block of land that is not level at the top, that is tilted, that is a, tilted at the top. One part of the top part is lifted up more than the other. That is what we are seeing here. This is a block of land, but it's not flat at the top as a block mountain could be. And so we have a tilt block like that. Now it can be formed by either tension of forces or compression of forces. Obviously if there are tension of forces, the land is pulled away from each, the crustal rocks are pull, pulled away from each other, then leads to the formation of no more faults, and then the land may sink more on one part uh, than the other because the land on either side sinks as the middle block remains in its uh, position. But as one piece of the land is sinking, uh, the, the middle part may also slightly sink, which may lead to the formation of a tilt block. Or we may have it through tension, I mean, compression of forces where the crustal rocks are subjected to severe uh, compression of forces, which are more severe from one part than the other, then we have the formation of uh, reversed faults, and then we have continued pushing, and the more severe pushing from one side may lead the uh, block to be tilted on one part and that is the formation of a tilt block. Sometimes we may have uh, a series of tilt blocks, several of the tilt blocks being formed. An example of what we have here. So what can we call them? This is a tilt block landscape, and it is formed in the same way. The compression of forces act on a, a crustal rocks, they lead to the formation of a series, multiple uh, uh, reverse defaults, which will lead now continued tensional, I mean continued compressional forces will lead the blocks to be raised, but they will not be uh, raised uniformly. They will be tilted more on one part. Each one of them is tilted more on one part and one part is raised up more than the other. And that is uh, bringing us to the end of our uh, features that are, are formed by uh, faulting. That is, um, we have the formation of a tilt, of, we have the formation of an escarpment. We have the formation of a, a host mountain. We have the formation of a tilt block, which we may, if there are many, we may call them uh, tilted 
land tilted block landscape and then we have the rift valley which we shall come to look into our next lesson and i'm welcoming you well in advance thank you very much for giving me your time and may you be blessed as you continue growing in geography continue watching this youtube channel where you will get more similar content to help you during your study in high school and kindly share so that your friends can get the same kind of content and be helped in their study as well thank you have a nice time